Good eye. Scott Ackerman, Lauren Lapkus, and me, Paul F. Tompkins, are traveling to Australia and the United Kingdom. We are performing eight new live episodes of Comedy Bang Bang, and you can get them all exclusively on Howl. Binge on the four Australia tour stops and get ready for four more stops in England at the end of September. Howl Premium also gives you access to 42 more Comedy Bang Bang specials, more than 150 hours of original miniseries, including shows from Super Ego, I'm in that as well, and over 100 comedy albums, including three of my own. Listen, guys, I'm calling you to take action with this call to action. Go to howl.fm slash spont, S-P-O-N-T, to subscribe to Howl and start your free trial. Plus, if you sign up for an annual plan, you save 40% off the regular price. That is a full year of Howl for just $34.99. This deal is available for a limited time, and you can only get it on the web. The World Wide Web, that is. Go to H-O-W-L dot F-M slash S-P-O-N-T to get a one-month free trial and the opportunity to get a discounted annual subscription for a limited time. That's H-O-W-L dot F-M slash S-P-O-N-T. I-L-O-V-E-Y-O-U. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to you. And to ever, and to ever, should be listening alongside of you. Folks, we all need someone in this life. You know, you might be someone that says, I, I don't need a relationship to define me as a person. That, that's, you introduced that concept, by the way. I did not. I'm saying we all need someone. I didn't say what the someone was. It could be a friend. It could be a family member. Mother, father, brother, sister. (sighs) Aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, cousin. Grandparent. I'm not going to get into second cousins, great grandparents. I don't... I think that shit... It makes me so mad, guys. It makes me so mad. There's enough family. Everyone, there's enough titles, right? Like, we get these titles. When you get into great-grandparent, second cousin, I tune out. I tune out. I just want to know about the prime family unit with the accepted, specific titles that everyone has. I don't know. I don't want to... I don't want to hear about those second cousins. What, are you having a duel? (laughs) You're going to meet some cousins on the field of honor? Duels, that was a crazy thing that happened. Where there were, you you know, you got upset because somebody said something. You were like, oh, that made me so mad. I want to attempt murder on you. And you're going to agree to it because otherwise you look bad. (laughs) There were like rules to it. (laughs) And so even when somebody got shot or stabbed with whatever the thing, the weapon was. Oh, that's so nice. You got a choice of weapons. Oh, let's see. What do I feel like? (laughs) Swords are so much work because you, ugh, too much hustle. I like pistols. I like, yeah, I either want to shoot a ball into your face or have you do that to me. Then the person shot or stabbed or whatever. And then the referee of the duel is like, um, are you good now? Does that <laughs> satisfy your complaint? And the person who did the shooting or stabbing is like, yeah, I guess that makes up for that guy calling me a scoundrel or a rapscallion. And then that's the thing. I don't know when 
that got outlawed? When when did people wake up and say, "This is nuts. I can't do this." Got you got you got mad at him. <laughs> That's not we we're not doing we're not, I tell you what. We're not sanctioning murder anymore for arguments. I don't care how formal maybe they maybe it was because it was so formalized. We're like, no, this seems logical. This seems logical. Let's do this for a long time. And then eventually like, we shouldn't do it anymore. I mean, we'll still put people to death in prisons. That's good stuff. <laughs> That's more than just arguments. That's like, we're pretty sure this guy's a murderer. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there might be a chance he's not willing to take it. I know I'm not a murderer. Hey, if you don't if you don't want to get uh, put to death by the state, don't seem like a murderer. <laughs> Good advice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I have a free form conversation with some special guests and then myself and some improviser pals do a narrative Improv, that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Evan Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to have these gentlemen here. This is long in the making, and it's finally happening, and I'm very thrilled. You will know these gentlemen as the hosts of Earwolf's own Hollywood Handbook. Welcome to Spontaneous Nation, Sean Clements and Hayes Davenport. Hi, hi Paul. Hi, guys. Oh, man. Hey. Guys, hi. Wow. Was it torturous to sit there while I was doing that monologue? No, I knew <laughs> just not to pipe up because I've heard people try to do that before. Get sent and you back. are not <laughs> sent nice back. about it. Yeah. And, it, and one thing was interesting is I've heard them pipe up and you've gone like, well, I told you before the show there would be yes. a monologue. No, yes. And then I thought like, you didn't do that with us. Stay. Like you didn't tell me that. So no. if I did chime in, yes. I'd be within I've my rights. I've heard you say you got the email that said it was a monologue. But I didn't. We did not get yeah, an email. No email. Like Which makes like us you think that you wanted us. Episode. You wanted us to try and come into the paint. <laughs> you're listen, you're so talking you about a very specific episode. Mm -hmm. The most recent one. The most so, recent one. That's right. So, but during the monologue, I had some thoughts. Please. One thing about um, dueling is you said, like, after one guy gets shot, the arbiter or whatever will turn and be like, are you good? But I think mm. what they actually would say was, I guess he was right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it's a disagreement. And then whoever gets hit with the bullet, That's it right. goes like, I had agreed with his side of the argument. That's right. But I guess it turns out he was wrong because yeah. he got hit with a bullet. <laughs> whoever is <laughs> in such a weird, horrible yeah. testament to just violence to might makes right. Like, okay, you you managed to shoot him before he shot you. So then we defer to you. And even the guy. The better shot even, so then what was, how's it pronounced then? Yeah. <laughs> Even the Bro guy who was Broccoli shot, rat. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who was shot has to be down there. Like, oh yeah, I guess he was. I guess he is. I was right so confident. That. I thought it was Rob, but I mean, oh, here I am with a bullet and me the, bleeding out. The chance I was willing to take to save face. At the end, the they would put wax bullets in because they realized, like, I guess it's not really about someone dying. It's just about like who wins the duel of shooting. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. So, but it took them a long time to be like, oh, nobody has to die. It's just like, who wins? So then you would shoot someone with a wax bullet, uh -huh. which I'm sure still hurts. Oh, yeah. It must be a mother. So then you get this dumb, like, <laughs> precursor to paintball mm -hmm. shot at you. Yeah. And then you just have to take it like, no. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. I guess you won. Seems you say, better. Say whatever you want about my wife. <laughs> Guys, I have a question for you. Mm. No, no. <laughs> Why do you say, oh, no? I just say, I hope it's a question I like. <laughs> what are the types of questions you don't like? There were some in previous episodes that I'm like, oh, I, I hope like, I don't get uh -oh, one like that. Yeah, if I get that, I'm going to be like, I don't know. What one that stands they out to me. They do run the gamut. They run yeah. the gamut. The Sam Richardson one where it was define magic, uh -huh. and he just, A, loves magic and had happened to have gone to the Wizarding World of Harry right. Potter the day before. I'm right. like, I'm not going to have anything like that. 
But you There's, know that you can the, – the questions are somewhat open to interpretation. They don't have to be – Yes, exactly. Okay. Because that's, that's what I'm afraid it's, of. How, do you, how would you answer this question is basically what it comes down to. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what makes me nervous. Yeah, Sean, okay, Sean, Sean needs – We've noted your nervousness. He needs bumpers. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's bumper bowl with Sean. <laughs> are you afraid it's going to be a personal question? Oh, well, that wouldn't help. <laughs> Now, I feel like there's a thick coating of irony here. You're not actually scared about the question. No, I'm confident in my ability to answer. You're a fearless, but you wouldn't be an improvisatory performer if mm. you weren't uh, somewhat of a fearless person. But oh. normally he gets to play like, uh, like a funny used car salesman. Mm. Or <laughs> Hayes has been to my show. Yeah. yeah he'll do, like, he has this like slimy used car salesman character that like normally he could use that as like a cover for his like real emotions. But Good if it's scene, a personal right? question. Yeah. You wear like a crazy loud plaid jacket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In your mind. <laughs> oh, I, I'm projecting that, but yeah. you just might be up there in a T-shirt in dun- dungarees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's All what right. makes improv cool. Here's the quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, real, it's real cool. It's real cool. Of the art forms, I mean, is rock and roll maybe the coolest in terms of dress code? Number one is rock and roll. Number two, improv. Number two, improv. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought that was the question. No. Okay. That would be a weird coincidence. Yeah. Here is the question. This was submitted by our previous episode's guest. If you are curious, I'm not going to, I can't like trick you guys with this because you probably heard it before. If you are curious as the identity of the previous episode's guest, yeah. I would direct you, the listener, to the howl.fm archives. Yeah, but I know who it was. You do know who it was. Mm-hmm. You do? Why don't you tell me who it was? I'd rather not say. You want to. You got the question you to ahead generate, of time? This is for you to generate traffic. Sean has the question your, already. To your iTunes. It's not page. spontaneous. Sean, Sean, do you already know the question? Uh, well, we'll see. we'll see. I have in this mind is. what I think it is. And he didn't tell me what it was. Do you know Because he wants his answer to be better than mine. Lucky for you, duels are not a thing anymore. Because this <laughs> this honestly would be like a duel-worthy thing <laughs> in duel time. The whole thing is it's supposed to be spawned. Been up all night writing my answer. <laughs> Here we go. What is the first thing you broke that wasn't yours? Hmm. What was the first thing you broke that wasn't yours? Uh, yeah, I have a story about this. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> yeah. Sean, let's hear it. Uh, well, so my sister had this very small, like, kids record player mm-hmm. with some kids records. Was it a Hasbro clothes and play? Mm, probably. Mm-hmm. And one of the records was some kind of strawberry shortcake thing with <laughs> strawberry shortcake adventures, you know, the character. Yes. So it would be like a little story. Yeah. Uh, they might have had songs too, but there was I the characters no of like the songs. strawberry shortcake land. Yes. And she really liked this record. And we got in a big fight uh, when I was very young, I remember. Uh, and... I took the record and I threw it like a frisbee against the wall and it exploded to a million pieces. It was probably her favorite thing in the world. Oh. And another thing is, I also liked it. <coughs> what? It was like a thing we would do where we would listen to it and I would be like, this is pretty good, this strawberry shortcake How song. close are you guys in age? She's three years older than me. Oh, okay. All right. And so... Uh, but so I immediately regretted doing it, but I was just like, well, this is the meanest thing I can think to do. You regretted doing it because it now it deprived you of the entertainment. I punished myself yeah. and I went, this was not a uh, um, appropriate response either. Like You this knew that, was at, not- that at that young. Yeah, I think I was like, this was way too far for whatever we were fighting about, <laughs> you know, like... Uh, I don't know, but I do remember I remember throwing and smashing that record and instantly regretting it. <laughs> um it was and it was mean and she was upset. She may still be upset. Hayes, what about you? I have hold, hold on a second, I'm sorry. She may still be upset. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> she, she might still I think if I upset. brought it up to her, she'd be like, oh, it's yeah. something there is some, I've seen you guys interact and there is something. There's something going on. Yeah, yeah, so maybe it is that. Were you guys close growing up? Um Yeah, uh, off and on, you know. Sometimes we got along great, sometimes we didn't. Uh 
but yeah, I think not really. We got much closer when like she left the house and went to college. Right. When you were both more closer to being grown ups, we suddenly were more mature in our interactions. <laughs> As we aged, we seemed to be more adult. Um, <laughs> hey, thanks. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm just because I. Oh, this is why I didn't want to get. <laughs> <laughs> Because I exactly what I have, I have a about. bunch of bro- I have a bunch of brothers and sisters. Yeah. And uh-huh. Now that we're all adults, we all we our relationship is of course much different than it was when we were kids. And yeah, I re- we relate to each other more as people, you know. Yeah, and so we can have conversations that we couldn't have had when we were younger, of course. Mm-hmm. But I know, but we did not. I don't think that we grew up like my my first it was my sisters and then my brothers. Um, and my brothers and I were not particularly close. Like, we didn't do stuff together. We didn't hang out together in that way. Mm-hmm. Maybe when we were little kids, we played together. But then in that in-between time, not at all. Were there any sets of brothers? Or was there, like, one, two where it's, like, these two are, like, a clique? And like oh, definitely my a- older and my younger brother. Ah, weird. So I have intense middle child syndrome yeah. that I have to, like, e- e- as an adult, like— Okay, take it easy. Because then it's a real what the like, situation is. What did I do? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys, Absolutely. you guys don't not like your brothers. Well, you don't like me. Yeah, <laughs> these dudes seem to be uh, pretty cool with each other. <laughs> Hayes, what did you break? I haven't broke. I have to use a like, sort of a loose interpretation of the word break because the only thing I, for break I could think of is a wooden starfish on my parents' wall this <laughs> right. this Christmas. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Ju- How did you break it? I was juggling in my room. I had gotten... This some, past Christmas. Yeah, I was trying to... Uh, they, they. I found some tennis balls in the house and I was juggling them and uh, I knocked a <laughs> wooden starfish off the wall and broke it. But that story is so short, I don't really want to talk about it. Well, I want to ask you about it, though. Uh, was see, it a thing that had been in the one. house forever? This it's like a new. My parents just moved to Florida, so of oh. course you got to throw a wooden starfish sure. up on the wall. My Absolutely. sister lives in Florida too. Can you believe it? Yeah. And <laughs> is it something about Florida? Yeah, people who get stuff broken of theirs yeah. move to Florida or whatever. Or vice versa. We don't know. But I do have a better childhood <laughs> story because like this is what I ran through initially. I was like, should I talk about the wood starfish? But that I dispensed I with that. I want to ask about the wooden starfish, though. <laughs> There's so little there. But because it was not like an heirloom or anything. It was no. not like... No, but my so- mom, don't worry. She still found a way to be very upset with me <laughs> at 29 years old. Well, well, an interesting th- thing about starfish, their arms grow back. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Was and it- very fixable. Broke clean. Very there easy to just glue back together. Take it easy, mom. Yeah. Okay, so what what was the other thing? Well, when I was a kid, uh, I went through a stage when I was like a weird, like child environmentalist, and so I was I used to go <laughs> on all these like kind of nature walks and stuff. This was in Texas. We had sort of we lived in the woods, sort of. Um, and my friend Mike Kozlowski and I, Mike, who uh, taught me what pornography was long before <laughs> I was ready to learn about it, uh, we. We're walking. Does, by the way, does anyone get acquire that knowledge at a time that is appropriate? Yeah. I don't think that they ever. I think it's always too soon, or when it's like too late. Yeah. If, you, if you're like, oh, I feel like I should have known about this a long time ago. <laughs> Although, I, probably in like the 40s and 50s, mm-hmm. like the like maybe that is how like a serial killer comes about is they don't have like a reasonable outlet for like weird sexual stuff. And so then it becomes like killing pets or whatever first. Cause at the time it would have been much harder to access pornography. You're saying that if there had been easier access to pornography, probably a lot of serial killers would not have happened. We don't have that many anymore, (laughs) Paul. You don't hear about serial killers. I guess you don't, right? No. There's got to be some out there. They're all online. They're all the serial killers have gone digital. <laughs> well, the Craigslist killer was a serial killer. <laughs> That's true. He, he used a website. Mm-hmm. Who was the Craigslist killer? I don't remember that. So he's a Boston. Yeah, guy. he would um, sort of get into these casual encounters pages or whatever and set up these hotel room dates with women and. Uh, and then he would kill them. Uh, and he was like a law yes. student. Um, he, Funny you should mention yeah. that. I got a lot of – they released a security camera picture of him once that a lot of people 
thought looked like me. And oh. so I got a lot of emails God. being like, gotcha. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Wait, so what was, what was the story? So yes. you introduced your pornography too early. Yes. And so we were walking through the woods probably to find a stash of pornography. Uh, and there was like a develop, like a house being built in the woods near our house. And a lot of trees had been uh, like, oh, I like, forgot you were a child environmentalist. Yes. Okay. Ri- like ribbons had been tied to a bunch of trees. These like, uh, r- like red ribbons. Mm-hmm. Gotta take them off. And so I said, how dare they cut down all these trees? I'm going to stop them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I spend like four <laughs> hours running from tree to tree, yanking these four hours. ribbons. I spent a really long time doing this. How many this. trees were marked like the whole for, day. they were a like clearing lot. a forest? Kind Hundreds, of? yes. Wow. Yes, because I think there were like, well, what I thought at the time was they were going to like develop a whole backyard and just like chop down all these trees. Mark so I'm running to and trees. fro. I brought all the. We, we get. We get. It. We get. It. I I did some childhood environmental work as well. <laughs> I brought all the ribbons home, put them in my dresser drawer, uh, and then I went back like a week later, and there were like every tree had been cut down except like five or six left with ribbons tied to them. So what I had done? No. Yes. I had removed. I had removed the, the thing that was saving these trees. This can't be possible. The ribbons were to indicate: do not cut down this, this tree. This I can't. promise you. So this wait. Happened. So wait. So <laughs> so there's tons of trees. Yes, with ribbons and some without. That right. I thought it was like these are going to be but spared. No, nobody. Th- so so the order just goes through. Hey, if you see a tree with a red ribbon on it, don't cut don't it. Don't cut it down. Otherwise, which cut kind it of down. makes sense. The red ribbon is sort of like stop. Yeah, stop. <laughs> yeah, stop that chainsaw. But there's <laughs> yeah. so there's so little information going from the per- <laughs> the person who set this all up to yeah. the people who are cutting the trees or not cutting the trees that they were like, well, it seems like a seems like a lot of trees to cut down. It's also yeah. more than I thought it would be. It's a lot more effort for whoever's job it is to tie those ribbons. You would also think they might get paid by the tree and yeah. they thought they were making a <laughs> killing. You would also think there's so much it's a very involved process yeah. and a very noisy process yeah. that at any point somebody could have come along and said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, what are I you know. doing?" I know. But you know these knuckleheads in government I mean, honestly, okay. are you I had always assumed it to be, a, a, oh, to oh, be a private okay. operation, but okay. now that you mentioned it, <laughs> I guess it could have been but now, the so local how, government. How did you this. feel when you realized what had happened? I, that was actually the end of my child environmental <laughs> career. My only decision was to say, oh, well, I actually, instead of being sad, I would be like, well, now I don't care about this anymore. <laughs> so I, if I could jump onto this story for a minute. They built a big development right by my neighborhood when I was growing up, and they were building it on, like, this, like, wetland area. And so I guess I had heard tangentially maybe that some people environmentally thought this was bad, and this became an excuse for me and my friends to go and vandalize (laughs) – like we would go down to where the foundations were and they have all these sort of poles sticking out of mm-hmm. we're bending all the poles like now they won't be able to put a house yeah. here they've already put in a cement foundation <laughs> we're not saving it but we'd be like we're saving the environment but really we're just vandalizing right. <laughs> all of their construction equipment all of these like half built houses um, and but you had a and righteous under, excuse. Yes, under the guise of like, <laughs> we're the invi- eco kids. Yeah. <laughs> and me and my neighbors just ride bikes down there and fuck up all their stuff. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, and then, like, we, my parents knew we were hanging out there all the time. And then somebody really went nuts on the place and, like, put salt or uh, sugar in the gas tanks of all the oh. cranes and stuff and destroyed a bunch of expensive stuff. And they were like, somebody ruined all these foundations. And I was like, that's crazy. Um, and I, I wasn't there. Um, so that was scary for me. And then they built all the houses. And then, like, five years later, all these really expensive houses got put in. And then they were sinking. Because they've been built oh on that God. land. Oh. It was Fern Gully for me. I don't know if that influenced you as well. 
Oh gosh, that was, Ferngully was that's big her, for me. Yeah. You don't think it was strawberry shortcake? <sighs> was she? Was she I wish I could remember more. I was so I think young. Of her sort of being neutral on the environment. Here's why I'm happy with my answer. <laughs> it was maybe the first time, honestly, that I did it because I was so young. I don't really remember details of the record or the song or anything, mm. you know. But I wish I had more to give you in the story. What you remember is the experience of enjoying it with your sister. Yeah, yeah. sitting down, huddling around that record player and before you drove in. Insurmountable wedge between her toes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will return. We're going to take a little break. More with Sean and Hayes when Spontaneous Nation continues. Ciso! 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 What is it? Absolutely, an on demand streaming comedy service. Streaming comedy anytime, anywhere. It is curated to bring you all the good, they use a curse word, I'm going to say stuff in one place. CISO is only $3.99 a month and it is ad free. Guys, this is a good deal. You should get on this CISO thing now. It's only going to get better and better and better. Start your one-month free trial now. Available at CISO.com, the iOS App Store, Google Play Store, Roku, Xbox, Amazon Video, any of those places. Here's what you get with CISO. Original series. They're making up new stuff. Quotable classics. Uh, Monty Python, Dead Parrot stuff. Next Day Late Night. It's the, it's the late night shows that were on last night. They're there they're the next day, which is today. Stand-up specials. Oh, special. That sounds very good. And more. <laughs> that sounds good, too. You got to see these never-before-seen original CISO series, including Bajillion Dollar Properties. More on that later. You get all this Monty Python, Kids in the Hall. You get The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, The Late Show with Seth Meyers, SNL. That stands for Saturday Night Live. You get 30 Rock, Parks and Rec, Saved by the Bell. That is a surprise to me. I did not know that that was coming in this copy. But yeah, if you want to watch Saved by the Bell with no ads, check it out. There's a British comedies like The IT Crowd, Alan Partridge, The Mighty Boosh, Faulty Towers, The Office UK. You got to see that stuff, guys. Come on. Let me talk to you about these originals. Harmon Quest, a hilarious journey into the world of fantasy role-playing featuring Dan Harmon and his comedian companions. I am in an episode of that. Take My Wife. Oh, I love it so much. An original comedy series created by and starring two married comics, Cameron Esposito and Rhea Butcher. They created the show. They host the podcast, Put Your Hands Together. It is produced by Comedy Bang Bang Productions, and I'm in an episode of that. Hidden America with Jonah Ray. It is a fake travel show where the places are real, but the people are not. Except for Jonah Ray, he's a real person. And the rest are actors pretending to be people. It's not like elaborate puppets. The UCB Show, a weekly variety sketch showcase from the original founders of the UCB, the Upright Citizens Brigade, Amy Poehler, Matt Walsh, Matt Besser, Ian Roberts. Those guys, plus the up-and-coming rising stars of the UCB community. The Cyanide and Happiness Show. It's a new animated series based on the wildly successful webcomic and, as I said, bajillion dollar properties. This is a reality satire. You know, those uh, million dollar brokers. Uh, 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 flip this mess. <laughs> All those shows. <laughs> All those shows about real estate. This is a satire of those shows and it is created by Kulav Vilaisak. Amazing guest stars like Adam Scott, Zach Galvanakis, Andy Richter, The Wild Horses, all kinds of amazing improv people. And guess who else? Me. I'm a regular on the show. Guys, get in on the ground floor of CISO right now. Okay? I'm telling you, this is where it's all happening. You got to do this. You shut up, computer. Don't tell me not to tell them. You got to do it. CISO.com. Get in it. What is all this talk about blapron? Well, those people are mistaken. It's Blue Apron is the name of it. Blue Apron. It's going to help you cook 
You think you can't do it? You can. Blue Apron makes it easy. You can cook some healthy food for yourself that tastes good. Here's the thing. Blue Apron's got this fresh, high-quality ingredients that taste better and are better for you. And you're going to know where your food comes from. That's important. I never thought I could cook a damn thing. I got one of these Blue Apron meals shipped to me and I cooked it. I felt like a genius. And it turned out pretty good. I served it to myself and another person whom I live with, whom I'm legally married to. We both enjoyed it. And after the meal, she said, good job, honey. That's a thing she calls me. Here's the thing. Blue Apron doesn't just help you. It helps out the community. They've established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. As a result, seafood is sourced sustainably under standards, developed in partnership with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. I like the sound of that organization, and I bet they have cool patches on their jackets. Beef is raised humanely. Chickens are free-range. Pork is raised naturally. They use regenerative farming practices. They don't have to talk about it all day, so they don't need to say that phrase, which is very difficult, but it's a good thing. Those are, those are used for produce. Regenerative farming practices. Blue Apron can be delivered to 99% of the continental United States and 99% of food deserts. What's a food desert? It's a place where food is hard to come by. Get it? Because Blue Apron ships the exact amount of each ingredient required for a recipe, they are reducing food waste. That's a big part of cooking. If you're not real good at it, you might say, I used too much of this stuff. I made too many things, and now I have all these leftovers that I'm never going to eat because I'm a big baby. Blue Apron, they got the solution for you. You make the meal that you need, the end. And guess what? Cooking together builds strong family bonds. Research shows, not my research, Blue Aprons. Blue Apron families cook nearly three times more often. That sounds very nice and sweet, whether your family is two people or three people <laughs> or more. Those who spend a lot eating out or at high-end grocery chains can now spend under $10 per person for a healthy, delicious meal. That seems impossible, and yet Blue Apron has made it true. For less than $10 a meal, Blue Apron delivers the seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. They know that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals, so they set the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal suppliers, family-run farms, fisheries, and ranchers. Whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron is bringing you the best, baby! Here's some of the stuff available in August. August is almost done, so get in on this. Spiced pork burgers with goat cheese and cucumber corn salad. Summer vegetable and quinoa bowl with fairy tale eggplants. I've never even heard of those. They sound very exciting. Maybe they'll make a dress for you to go to the ball. Shishito peppers and corn. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> they really should have put fairy tale eggplants at the end because that's the most exciting ingredient. Chicken tinga tacos with summer squash and tomato salsa. All that sounds fantastic. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash PFT. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. It honestly does feel very good. And it's nice to eat a good meal for a change. That is blueapron.com slash PFT. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. <laughs> Maybe the best ad yet? Only history can decide. And only God can judge me. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. People who never went anywhere, and neither did we. We are still here with Hayes Davenport. Hi. And Sean Clements. Hi. Do you guys ever have an issue with people not being able to tell your voices apart? Early on, that was a problem. And I think I sort of... Naturally, my instinct is to get out of the way. And so <laughs> I think I just naturally went up a little more. See, I got I, a little more nasal. I, I mean, think your voices are very distinct. Okay. But I know that with a lot of times when it's two people talking on a thing of the same gender, yeah. that's a common complaint in podcasting. We will see that on various internet message boards that people go like either I can't tell them apart or often – 
I had them reversed in my I head. Thought, I <laughs> thought Sean's voice was yeah, Hayes' voice. we get that all the time. Like, they look like they should have each other's voices. Um, is something That's, that gets said. But Hayes is only. so generous. He <laughs> got out of the way. He changed. He's just so selfless. And So your God. approach is you pitch your voice slightly higher. Yes, or at least he I, says that. I, I Are you doing it right now? <laughs> I think I have... It, it, it's hard to tell. I do think I am a little more nasal on podcasts than I am in real life. And it's impossible to to do something different. But now, aren't you just saying that your voice sounds different to you than you expected Through headphones? it to sound? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> right. Just a tinny effect of... I do think I hear my voice more in my ears on podcasts <laughs> than I do in just my normal life. That's probably true. Yeah. Where did you guys meet? We met on a show called Alan Gregory... Uh, that sounds familiar. fondly what remembered that? by few. Uh, it Boy. was Jonah Hill's Fox animated show if that we was going to be on oh, between Simpsons yes, and Family yes, Guy. Yes, we could have yes, known yes, five yes, years yes, ago yes. that we would be getting a "That Sounds Familiar" about well, Alan Gregory. We thought it was going to be a big hit. Yeah, <laughs> we, maybe a, maybe a sarcastic "That Sounds Familiar" <laughs> is what we would have expected. Like when you'd say, like say, like we met on The Simpsons, and you'd be like, "That sounds familiar." I that's, think I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, that's what we thought we'd be getting <laughs> with Alan Gregory and right. instead when in of fact, very sincere. That sounds, that sounds familiar. familiar, but it doesn't exist anywhere. You can't find. Find it even if you worked on it and maybe wanted to watch it because you have fun memories of doing the show. No DVD, you not cannot. even YouTube. No, no not even not YouTube. Really. No one bothered. There are a few. <laughs> no one bothered. Uh, currently updated character parody accounts on Twitter. Mm. We remember we from found that these, show these recently. Yes, it, it really seems like one person is like having all the characters talk to each other. Doesn't that Just show to, predate Twitter though? No, no, it was uh, no because one million moms really hated that show. <laughs> yeah, and we had a couple Twitter celebrities on the staff. One million moms is a ooh, one million moms is a an organization yeah. that exists just to harass media outlets, saying we don't like this thing because we don't like the values that mm -hmm. ex it expresses yeah. on the show. It has been debunked that it's not quite one million moms; no. it's far less than a million, and. Um, I've heard Have of they, 13 moms. <laughs> that's that's a real exaggeration. So low, man. yeah. That's really low. Yeah. Compared to a million? And I heard two of them might be the same mom. <laughs> one's Have, a grandmother. She yeah, counted one's, herself twice. Yeah, one's the other one's mom. Because she's a mother and a grandmother. Yeah. yeah. Have they been successful in, in accomplishing anything at all? Well, they might have gotten Alan Gregory. Yeah, uh, that's probably their biggest really? try. Taken off the air. It was either that or the fact that no one watched it and the people who watched it didn't like it. But <laughs> at least they were watching. Yeah, <laughs> they're talking about it. I remember that show because I auditioned for it. Oh, boy. And then I wow. was told they gave the part to their friend. That was the exact wording oh, from wow. my agent. Like, you could just... Don't say it like that. That adds up. <laughs> yeah. That adds up. <laughs> I, I think that's the result of most auditions. <laughs> that's 100%. They gave the part to their friend. Yeah, the person they already knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you do that? They gave sure. the, it's either they gave their part to their friend or they gave the part to a famous person. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> well, why wouldn't you want to have a famous person on your show? Either you want to work with your friends or the person should be so famous you have to tell your friend we'll get you on the next one. <laughs> That's TV. Yeah, that's TV. It uh, was Alan Gregory. Um, it was uh, sort of the first real writing job for both of us. Mm -hmm. You did not know each other before this. No, no, we hadn't met before. Mm. But Sean was uh, is a very forbidding presence when you meet him the first time. Does Tell gives me you about that. gives you very little, and you're always wondering, of course, if he's being sincere with even the most like offhand comment. You that. wonder if he's making I think fun I can of you. See that. Sure. Um, so. Uh, at yeah. my wedding, that four people made toasts. Every single toast was referenced the fact that no one can ever tell if I like them or not, and that I'm just kind of a frosty, yeah. uh, withholding person. <laughs> At my wedding, I like that <laughs> in front here's, of all my family. Here's what I love: is that the three people after the first toast are like, I, "I'm committed to this. I got to do it. Yeah, it's been covered. Yeah." I'm gonna cover it some more. I was the last toast, and I think I, <laughs> Were you really? I think I went the hardest. <laughs> mm -hmm. He did an impression of me, which was very good, actually. Yeah. Don't let me hear a little bit of that now. 
It's like uh, what, what I I described your voice as I think um, as sounding like congealed vegetable oil. Yes. <laughs> just like it's just like. Yes. Oh, yes. You, oh, you like that? It's like <laughs> there's a like just for anything. Sean, is this ever a problem in your relationship? You're it's a married been a problem man. for my entire life with everyone that I can't control whether I sound sarcastic, really. Like, when I'm trying to be sincere. What do you mean you can't control that? Like, the the harder You're saying I, it's just how your voice The sounds. harder I try to sound sincere, uh, the more people it think that into, I'm, like, making fun of them. Yeah. And I just— it. It's just sort of my natural this cadence is lifelong. or tone. This is lifelong. Yeah, since I was a kid, people will be like, hey, you little shit. Like, like I'll be like, oh, that's really good. I like that. And they'll be like, fuck <laughs> oh, you. That made me mad just <laughs> um, now. And so, yeah, it's just an issue that I have, and people who are close to me learn to deal with it uh, for whatever period of time they decide to. <laughs> and then it becomes too much. <laughs> And they create some distance. <laughs> so, Hayes, when did you feel like, oh, okay, I th- I'm taking this guy at his word. That he- After the show, <laughs> I think you, and the only reason I say that, I, I'm not positive, but I think you approached me about doing a podcast, and the only reason I say that is because I would never have had the courage to initiate that with you. Yes, I approached you. I yes. said I wanted to do one with you. Because yes. Hayes now, is a hard guy to keep in touch with as we're talking about each other's faults. Yes. <laughs> I do a good Let's job of making it. Sean look great in term in like uh, when we're on the same email chain. I <laughs> I'm very very bad about being like, the one who responds. Yeah, texting, email, just communication in general mm-hmm. is just a black hole. Yeah, and I was realizing, oh, I really loved hanging out with and talking to Hayes, but unless I have some kind of formalized thing that we do together, right. we're going to completely lose touch. Yeah. Because he doesn't care. No, it's not that I don't care. I do feel very bad. That's the worst part. I think about all the all the loose emails that I have unaccounted for, and I think, oh no, <laughs> there's like four or five right now that could get me really depressed. There's a real th- <laughs> because you haven't responded to them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There's a real thing where I do constantly as we are like making the show and scheduling the show. I just go, God, when I'm the like responsible half of a duo. Mm -hmm. That's a bad thing. (laughs) But it must feel good. Outlook. It must feel nice. (laughs) Um, At times. Yeah. At times, it's a crushing pressure. So, what's I going to ask? In the same way, in person, Sean makes me feel very charming and, like, super, like, friendly and approachable. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he puts the guests at ease and stuff if we've never met them before. (laughs) So you you are sort of the good cop in that situation with brand new people. I, the IRL, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Roles reversed in cyberspace. Because Sean and I had met before, but mm-hmm. I, I don't think I met you, Hayes, until I did the reality show show, yeah. which was your first podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. We hadn't met mm-hmm. before. No, I don't think so. Sean, I remember a great time with Sean in Montreal at the uh, Just the for Laughs wow. Festival. And I was paired on a show with uh, Sean and uh, Dominic Dierks, mm-hmm. and you guys were doing Sean and Dom. And I had a set. I think we did like two nights, yeah. right? Something like that? Yep. And I had a set that I thought went so badly that I walked – and I, because th- I think I opened and you guys closed it. I can't remember. Yeah, it was you would come out and do stand up and then sort of set the table to be like, and what you're going to see now yeah, is yeah, some yeah. sketch comedy, and Sean and Dom are going to do that. And they had sort yeah. of paired bo- both of their sketch shows that year with an yeah, established yeah, yeah, stand up. Yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. Right. And one thing I remember was, in addition to, I was a very big fan of yours. I thought you were so funny. I was like, oh, great. We're paired with Paul. But also when I stayed to watch the other sketch show, which had been paired with Reggie Watts, mm-hmm. who's also a brilliant, funny guy, he did no, like, and now I'm going to leave and you'll watch a sketch show. He just came out, did his weird Reggie Watts thing, yeah. then left. <laughs> then suddenly everyone there who went to see him is watching a sketch show right. and was like, we don't. <laughs> We don't know how to transition into this. <laughs> so he's like, God, we lucked out because because people like knew what they were getting right. from us. Um, I think I might even have said it at the top of the show. Here's what tonight is. Yes. Is that we're going to see this. Yes. Show. It was a very, um, it, just a great job of hosting and you would do, and then I was always very impressed. You would do stand up about 
the egg place next to the hotel that we were staying. <laughs> just things I had seen eggs. walking around right. in Montreal. Right. I would go like, he's noticing all this stuff and he's <laughs> got material on it. <laughs> but there was one night that the, I, I thought I was so unhappy with my set and I felt like this crowd was giving me nothing that I had never done this before. I walked off the stage and out the door. Ooh. Like I just walked up the aisle like goodbye. <laughs> like didn't say, I didn't say goodbye to anyone. I like said, thank you very much. And I introduced these guys and then I just fucking left. Wow. And then people, I, I would run into people like, hey, I saw your show. It was really funny. And I'm like, what's going I felt like people were, like it was a prank. But then I, I, I think that was maybe one of my earliest times at that festival and realized, mm -hmm. oh, that's kind of, especially with a very, with a very local, like Montreal heavy crowd, yeah. you're not going to get as big a response as you're used to other places. They're just a more reserved kind of crowd. And yet, it the, was and yet the festival that, is supposedly just for laughs. It's supposed, they, they put it out there. This is our sole it's purpose. Being just for laughs. This is it. Yeah. Paul, this is have, the only reason we're here. I have more about Montreal, which is we were part of Zoo Fest, if you recall. Oh, I'll never forget Zoo Fest. And, we, and that was just like some label they had put on that part of the festival. We were in a very long, thin room. Yes. A nice long room with high ceilings that was not conducive to doing a comedy show. No. You can't hear or feel the audience. Yeah. We also did one other show while we were there that was not hosted by you. It was hosted by Mike Lee and Black, so I got to experience what people must experience when they meet me. Sure, yeah. <laughs> How do you like it? How do you like it? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Just someone who's not doing anything I can point to as wrong. Yeah. But I... Uh, but the I, word. I, like, I'm like, you don't like me? I don't like you. <laughs> it's just like, well, he didn't say he didn't like you. <laughs> I think it's I think it's the confidence of someone, and I've always envied this, that that someone is able to project, I honestly don't care if you live or die. <laughs> and I I really like Michael a lot, and I've had like great times with him, but there but there is that initial meeting with someone where you're like, oh, I'm like a gnat to you. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> if, if if someone came along right now and stabbed me in the chest and you watched me take my last breath, you might shrug. <laughs> that's the sort of vibe that is given off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what I was picking up as well. <laughs> so pretty accurate description. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another break. During the break, we will procure a location for our improv oh boy. from Sean and Hayes. <laughs> Why is that an I'm old scared. Hayes I've never scared. done it before. Hayes is scared of the improv. I'm scared of the real question. I've never You've done You've never done improv. improv before? No. Never. Uh, famously. <laughs> That's a, like a big thing for you? Yes. And I'm, know now I'm very you? scared that you're just finding this out. I am literally just finding this out. Look, I just I, assumed. We can... We could call this off. No. <laughs> the, wheel, the wheels are in motion. Okay. This is happening. Okay. Now. Hayes is untrained, but I think he's probably picked up some of my moves. <laughs> Can I tell you something, Hayes? You know somebody else is untrained is me. Well, I'm still learning. I remember the Improv for Humans episode where you had never done improv before. And That's then right. look at this. You ended up doing a competing improv podcast. <laughs> How's that rivalry shaping you? <laughs> you know, it puts me in mind of the glory days of Howard Stern coming into Philadelphia yeah. and crushing John DeBella, <laughs> the morning zoo on WMMR, where he forced DeBella to admit, oh, what, what an insane fucking thing. There was like a thing where Howard Stern like made John DeBella, who was the, the most popular morning DJ until Stern in the area, yeah. like made him formally apologize to him in public for having a radio show. Oh. And he did it. It was, it, what kind of a world, things have gotten worse since then. But that's, he should have had a duel. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it would have been less sad if he had been shot to death. To be the guy that's like, I guess I got to do this formal apology thing. Like, <laughs> there's, there's no way around it. I have to in public That's say, I'm great. sorry I have a radio show to I'm you. Him. Wow. Yeah. And every time you do a show from now on, you say, hi, I'm John DeBella. Sorry. <laughs> do you know Scott oh, Papakiri? No. 
I just thought maybe he's still in the stand-up world. That was who was on my my morning radio show was D. Snyder, and then they had local Connecticut stand-up Scott Papacuri would be uh, in there too, as um, like a sort of sidekick. Yeah, he was like also contributing. He was sort of a sidekick, come in and out. He would have been like the the, the Mark the Shark, mm-hmm. uh, which is was part of the zoo crew in Philly. Yeah, Pierre Robert. Mm-hmm. We had Balthazar we had and Nick Pebbles. The intern. <laughs> Balthazar and Pebbles. <laughs> well, Bubba the Love Sponge kicked out uh, um, D. Snyder on our radio station, and I didn't really like that. Was Bubba the Love Sponge? Was he a wrestling guy? Or was no. he a radio guy? Just no, he was just friends guy. with wrestling guys. With Hulk Hogan. Yeah. yeah. And then didn't his wife No, you're, yes. You're thinking of the guys that his wife would have sex with. Right. At, Bubba. At, at, at all times. At his command. I'm always thinking of that. Yeah, Bubba tricked him into having sex with his wife yes. on camera. Oh, Bubba. So Hulk Hogan had sex with Bubba Bubba's the Love wife. Sponge's wife. He came yes. over for a big dinner, <laughs> famously. It all comes back to me now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. His last name feel is like, Clem. feel like a pig. Like, he's, <laughs> he, he's the Clem God, guy. I hate so much. <laughs> Pillow talk. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that break I talked about? We're going to take it now. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to do our improv oh, no. with Sean and <laughs> All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation <laughs> returns to you. Guys. I want you to crack open some champagne, dig into your confetti trunk, and get ready to take your noisemakers out of their velvet case because this is my 1,000th ad for Lisa Mattresses. Lisa has done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience that we have all suffered through, and I mean every single one of us, man, woman, child, we've all experienced this, and it's cruel. It's cruel that a loving God would create a world where we have to go through this. Well, Lisa, in their hubris, <laughs> has achieved what God could not. They have done away with the awkward mattress show experience that we have all suffered through by creating a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and shipped for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. Guys, you know this. And yet, do you really understand it? Because I know you've heard me talk about this before, but I don't think it's sunk in with you guys yet. This is a revolution. The 10-inch Lisa mattress comes in all sizes. It is crafted with three unique foam layers, including two inches of memory foam and two inches of a really cool latex-like foam called a Vena. It's perforated to keep you as cool as the other side of the pillow. That's not just an expression. It's for real. If you're laying on your pillow... And your, your head heat heats it up, but the other side, it's cool over there. If you've never done this, flip your pillow over and enjoy. The Lisa mattress is 100% made in the USA and ships for free to anywhere in the USA and the, say it with me, Canada. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. And for every 10 they sell, they donate one to a shelter. Now, look, I'm laughing all through this ad, but that is a... F- for real, serious, wonderful thing that they do. If you need a mattress, go to Lisa and know that you're helping to help someone out. Go to leesa.com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout. You get $75 off. Lisa, here's to a thousand more ads for you. Oh. (sighs) Here's the thing. Of course it sucks to leave the show to go to an ad, but then you get there and the ad is so much fun, you can't even be mad. And then you're enjoying the ad so much, you don't want to go back to the show, but we're back in the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we have... Now, Sean, even just sitting there, you look very insincere. (laughs) How is it possible? That's where I'm comfortable. It's just us in this room. How are you? Just doing? With his How face. does it feel to be doing that? It's a nice little protective shell. Oh, now I get it. Like magic shell yeah. that you put on your iced cream. Oh, right. Yeah. Peanut butter flavor. <laughs> That's not. Do a, they make it in peanut butter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sounds good to me. It's not good at protecting the ice cream. It just makes it more vulnerable <laughs> to people wanting to just eat it. Well, the, here's the irony. Mm-hmm. 
the person who's putting the protective shell on the ice cream is the very person who wants to destroy the shell. Yes. The I hate to listen for us all. I hate to derail this show at all. <laughs> But I, just talking about that peanut butter magic shell did make me remember. Now, did you guys ever go to Friendly's growing up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of the Sundays had this hot peanut butter sauce on them. Do you remember this? I like if not. you got like the Reese's Sunday yeah, or the sure. Conehead Sunday, which was Reese's Pieces, and it, it looked had like some a face. peanut butter sauce. On had it. peanut yeah. butter like it was hot fudge, but they also had hot peanut butter sauce that was. Maybe the best thing I ever ate. Like when I was a kid, I loved it so much, and I just assumed it was a very popular ice cream topping. But it seems to not exist anywhere anymore. I I will say this: I don't remember that from the friendlies in the Philadelphia area. But I had such an unsophisticated and unadventurous palate for quite a long time. I might have looked at the peanut butter topping as like, who cares? Too crazy. Yeah. I gotta get hot fudge, of course. Right. Yeah. Maybe both. You could have had both. One scoop, of, one scoop of vanilla, hot fudge on the side, please. That's you. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Cup of hot fudge on the side. We talk about ice cream on the show a lot, yeah. right? Um, Isn't that true? It's true. People are nodding. Ladies and gentlemen, we have procured our location from Sean and Hayes, and we are ready to begin our improv. Just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use sound effects to move us about in time. Let's say we're in a scene and we want to find out what's happening somewhere else at the exact same time. You'll hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. Sounds like a salad spinner to me. That's what it sounds like to you? Mm-hmm. I call that one the salad spinner. We had, um, when I was growing up, my we, we had one of the salad spinners with a rope. You pull a rope. <laughs> like an outboard motor? Yes. <laughs> I know they do the the push button ones now. Do you know what I'm talking about, Sean? Some salad spinners have like a core that you pull, and it sounds exactly like that. Text me when he's done, Paul. I don't know. I call that sound effect the dust devil. That's it. (laughs) This? Oh, yeah. That's me getting picked up and carried away in a dust devil. Oh, oh, not, not, not the, vacuum the vacuum. Not the dirt devil. Yeah. That's the, the, but the right. dust devil is the, the tiny devil. tornado yeah. that might pick up me in my shed, my freestanding shed. Can I say this? They might as well have called the dirt devil the dust devil because that about all it can pick up. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, they're not powerful vacuums. <laughs> oh, God. I feel like you're... You're like pouring it on. You were we, now that it's been you weren't aware oozed. that you dislike talking to me. <laughs> He's oozing until we bit. pointed out all the ways in which it's unpleasant. <laughs> and now there's this spotlight on it where you're like, wait a minute, I've never really liked this. <laughs> it's almost like you're doing it for the audience. Like this is what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. This type of behavior. Anyway, that's cut to. Let's say. We're going to travel backwards in time for some reason. Somebody's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. You'll hear this flash back sound effect. <laughs> sounds like a salad spinner to me. Now that one sounds like a salad spinner. Yeah. What? <laughs> Hayes, what, what does that put you in mind of? This. That, that's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> we had, guys- I had a salad spinner where you plucked a harp to make it go. <laughs> Let's say we want to return from the flashback to the present day or travel into the mysterious future. You'll hear this flash forward sound effect. Associations? Uh, Just moving forward in time. Garth, when he is picturing his dream girl. Well, they play. You don't think that sounds more like this? Yeah, it does sound more like that. Oh, wait, wait. No, that's the that's the Wayne's World flashback for sure. Yeah, doodle-doodle, doodle-doodle, doodle-doodle. yeah that's But then flashback. when he's when he's imagining the dream girl, yeah. No, when he imagines the dream girl, it's dream. Yeah, but I think there's a sound leading into dream weaver. That might be possible, yeah. Is that part of the song or is that a sound effect that the no, Wayne's World I think producers it's a, added in? Yeah, I, I I don't think you'll find that in the song. Mm. Unless it's maybe in the OST. What's OST? Original soundtrack? Original soundtrack. <laughs> Okay. Now here's how you can remember, and I and and uh, I uh, Hayes said, have you described the soundboard online? And we do this every once in a while. We do it on the podcast. We haven't done it in a while. This was built by engineer Ryan, and it looks like a stoplight essentially. Mm-hmm. And so let's, you remember, and, and you folks, you can picture this at home if you want to. Cut to is a big red button. So a stop. 
we're we're stop. We're going someplace else right now. <laughs> Flashback is a yellow button. Let's slow nice. things down. Mm-hmm. So slow, in fact, Let's we're going careful. backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be careful. Let's be careful and throw it in careful. reverse. Throw it in reverse. Mm-hmm. The flash forward button is green. Let's oh, proceed man. in time. Full speed ahead. To Let's the future. Let's floor it. <laughs> That's right. Now, we have memorized those sounds and what they mean. And we can picture them in our minds. We're ready to begin. Our location provided to us by Sean Clements and Hayes Davenport is... Aquarium! Aquarium! We take you now to... Aquarium! Well, salad's dry. That didn't take long at all. It only takes one. You just pull the cord. It's just one spin. Oh, now it's wet again. So this was a bad idea. To do this in the tank was a mistake. Oh, I just assumed. I thought. I assumed once we spun the salad dry, we'd yeah. take it out of the tank. No, I. Uh, this was to to try and have a nice dinner. Right. In the tank. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see it's obviously a lot of fun for the people Watching us yeah. out there, they seem to be really enjoying the fact that no matter how many times I spit the salad, it will not get dry. But you know what? It's a good experiment because now everyone can see that a salad spinner will not work underwater. Like, even though it'll function, yeah. it will not dry the salad because it's in water. Honestly, that's not... I appreciate that. That's not really what I'm focused on right now. I I am disappointed. It's humiliating for me that I thought yeah. that this would that this would work. Guys! <laughs> I messed up, man. What happened? What? She's dead, man. What? She's what? freaking dead. One Ooh. of the manatees, man. I just wanted to take a little swim with her, man. Ronnie. I, I didn't think anything would go wrong. Oh, God. Ronnie. 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 Yeah. Did you, is all you all you did was take a little swim? Well, we were swimming and then we Tell were me. Dancing. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You dance. Slow down. Tell me the whole story exactly as it happened. Boy, Suzanne, you're sure hungry tonight. Thanks. <laughs> Man, that water looks warm as heck. Must be pretty comfy hanging out in there all day. Oh, yeah, I don't really have a point of comparison. Oh, yeah. Well, out here it can be kind of lonesome. <laughs> uh huh. Are you uh, asking me to get in there and swim with you? Uh, you're not going to eat any of this hay, are you? <laughs> this wet hay? No, not if you don't want me to. Okay, Ronnie, let me just stop you right there. What? First of all, <laughs> uh-huh. the what? manatees don't eat wet hay. Why are you feeding the manatees wet hay? Sea cows. Yeah, sea cows. They, yeah. they 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 call them that because they sort of resemble a cow if it were swimming around in the sea. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean they are cows. And uh, can I say something? You're saying they don't eat wet hay, it's but a, you can tell from my story it they does, do. It's well, it sounds like she enjoyed it. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily what she's supposed to be eating. Okay, but she does eat it. Also, no, she, t- yes. t- Tim, if I may. Yeah, Ronnie, you kind of buried the lead here. You're saying that the manatee spoke to you. Yeah. English. That's how I felt. Okay, con- continue your story. Friggin' uh, splashed ya. <laughs> I'm underwater. It's uh, How could you splash me? I just pushed the water. Pushed. So, uh... Ronnie, let's I just... get some music I, up in this piece. I just gotta say, you realize you are you are just doing my voice. Like, uh, I'm just a sea cow. There's like, I'm not speaking to you. This is you talking right now. Oh, you Doing minx. my voice for me. <laughs> Ronnie, would you excuse us for just one second? Uh, yeah. Tim, can I talk to you in this broom closet? Yeah, sure. Okay. The uh, thing for me is, yeah. part of him knows that it's wrong. Yeah. Like, if... If he's able to say, 
if, if, if the character who's, he's creating yeah. is able to tell him he, that it's in, a figment of his imagination. Yes, in the story, yes. he's got the manatee saying, you're delusional, essentially. Yes, but he doesn't seem to be taking that in as Ronnie. Yeah. Only as Darlene. Yeah. And you notice that his shirt is soaked with blood, right? Yes. Which, uh, that's what's the weird, it should have washed off. <laughs> you would think it wouldn't be quite so vivid. Yes. That at the very it least. It makes me think there was so much more blood than water. Yeah. yeah in yeah. this enormous tank yeah. that Darlene, I guess, lived in. Yeah. There must have been more, even more blood than that. Let's, um, I tell you what, uh, I'm going to go check out the tank. Okay. Kind of keep him occupied. Make sure he doesn't go anywhere. I'm a little worried this is about my... I'm social media manager for this. Look, there's just us here. I just don't think this falls, this falls into my category. I work in the gift shop. You think I want to be dealing with I don't this? know why we're the only ones. <laughs> it's after hours. Yo, man, if I eat the salad... I just want salad. to show... Uh, yeah, go go ahead. Go ahead there, Ronnie. Eat the salad. <laughs> going to town on it. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on a second. <laughs> We better get out there. Ronnie, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went down the wrong pipe. Okay. It was <laughs> too wet. It's probably too wet. Yeah. Listen, Ronnie. Tim is going to stay here uh, with you. Uh-huh. Uh, he had some questions about uh, opening a Twitter account for you so you can share your experiences. He's the yeah. social media manager. He has questions for me on opening a Twitter account. Well, no, no. You, about your Twitter account. Do you want to have a Twitter account, an official account here for the aquarium? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I could see that really helping my brand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you uh, like your handle to be for uh, starters? At Manatee Coke. Killer. Well, hang on. Wait. What? Wait. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Maybe spell out what was the middle word? Huh? It's all one word. <laughs> well, me- <laughs> that's We're right. Not, I'm uh, sorry. Of I'm a terrible social media. It'll, no, no, no. I think you're doing a great job, Tim. Of course, it'll appear as all one word. You can't have <laughs> broken up words. You can't put and spaces it, in your Twitter no, handle. Of course I've not. tried. I mean, you could underscore. But it, se- it seemed like you were putting some words together. Mm. So if you could just break down what the words were. I know the first one was manatee. Yeah, mm-hmm. that one I got. The second one sounded like it was either Coke or coat. I thought it was Coke. Okay. It was Coke. <laughs> And then the last word, of course, killer. Right. Right. I, I, I'll let you guys continue this conversation. I'm just going to go uh, check on the thimbles to see if we're fully stocked. Yep, yeah, sorry. We're all out. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm just here as a roost. I got to go check on the manatee tank. Well, then who's ordering the new thimbles? Jeez, I'll I could take- order some more thimbles for you. We need hats. We do, they got to be hats for the Penguin Show. Guys, this is a bogus errand. I'll take care of all this tomorrow, all right? The Penguin's got to wear the thimbles for hats. That's where all the thimbles are going? What do you think? We put water in them and it all comes out. The thing, they get all <laughs> rusted up in there. Wait a minute. These thimbles have holes in them? And yeah, what kind of thimbles are you using? Just like a, the thimbles are supposed to protect your fingers from the needle. Yeah, mine's got holes. Are you thinking of you thinking of like a strainer, some kind of no my the, like a colander? No, my my little thimble's got holes in them, so the finger doesn't get too sweaty. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have your finger breathe when you're using the thimble. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> guys, I don't have time to debate thimbles with you. I gotta get over to the manatee tank. Well, that's uh, that's what somebody says when they're losing. <laughs> Okay. You know, I mean, like, of course, you don't want to have a thimble like debate now that you just got schooled. Backed into a corner a little I bit. I mean, Roddy just friggin' you knock your face off, put it on the ground. You I almost go want find a, it. I almost want to Google image a thimble. Uh, what's the what's the Wi-Fi here? <laughs> it's, it's of course Aquarium Guest One, <laughs> and the code is uh, my right. phone number. <laughs> Well, how did it get to be your phone number, by the way? Well, I was here when they put in a uh, friggin' uh, router. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, I'm seeing uh, a lot of things that look almost like holes here, but they're really more indentations. They're just dimples, little dimples. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, did I never did... really sized them up real close before? I got, probably. The problem is we don't have any. But we did have them. 
They were supposed to be for sale to the to the patrons of the aquarium, no, not put, to be used as props in the penguin show. We put them on the penguins' heads and make them little hats, and um, you know, work work like a charm right up until they went in the water, got them all rusty. Yeah, because they're not they're not designed for aquatic use. Mm, a lot of the paint came off too. <laughs> yeah, they're not supposed to be in the water. Yeah, hey, Guys, there's a uh, there's blood. Uh, <laughs> Just pouring into this room. Yes, I know. I'm trying. I was on my way to the manatee tank to see what's going on. I'm just noticing it's now uh, getting into my shoes. <laughs> well, you you just try to mop things up here, mm. and then I'll see what's going on at the tank. All right? Can you handle that? Right. Sorry about the whole thimble thing. I'm feeling bad. I don't look. look uh, it's fine. I'm mm-hmm. not mad about that. Yeah. I'm very concerned about this blood-filled the blood filled blood. Yeah, tank. that's number one. Thimble's number two. Thimble? Yeah, how about this? You can take Thimble off the list. I'm fine with it. Okay, then what's number two? Shouldn't have led with it then. What do you mean? You came in here and said uh, they're talking about any more Thimbles. No, I, that absolutely did not happen. I came in here. And then you guys started haranguing me about these thimbles. I tried to tell you there's an urgent matter at the manatee tank, and now here we are. Oh, you know what might work as a penguin hat? These shot glasses. All right, I'll let you guys figure this out. Oh my God. It is filled with blood, and somehow it's overflowing. And I gotta say, again, I'm just a social media manager, but you pick up a lot about the fish stuff. When you're, you know, like managing these accounts. Yeah. Some of this is manatee blood. Most of it, and I this is going to sound crazy, but I promise you this is true. Okay. Is seahorse blood. Most of it is seahorse blood? Most of it is seahorse blood. Now, look, I just worked the gift shop, but I, too, have picked up a few things. Yeah. About fish. Sure. You know, the seahorses are small, right? Right. So in order for this to be mostly seahorse blood, this is a pretty sizable tank. Right. Well, Misters, is the aquarium is closed now? Yeah. Hi, hi, son. Yes, I'm sorry. The The aquarium is closed. Uh, well, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. My mom left me in the octopus tank. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Can I just say, well, yeah. as the social media manager, we're not getting a lot of traffic for this aquarium. Mm. I honestly think it could be worth it to, for us to let this child in to, you know, to, to, to pay admission for the aquarium. Well, no, he's saying he, he got left behind. He's been here. I've been in the well, aquarium yeah, but, since two days ago. Well, yeah. Two days ago. So that's what I'm saying. It's another day. We're just going to let him. Oh, I see. Like, you know what? <laughs> just stay here for free. I owe Honestly, you back. Yeah, no, back rent, no, basically. No on ins the- and outs. No ins and outs. We do. We we will hold you or your parents responsible for another day's admission to the yeah, aquarium. And I don't see any moms here, so it's going to have to be you. Okay, I mean, I don't have any cash, but I have some stuff that might be considered valuable. Oh, like what? Well, this autographed copy of uh, Exile on Main Street. Oh, hold, hold on a second, son. Tim, can I talk to you in the room closet? Yes. Sure. Holy shit. Did you see that? That, that looks like a mint it's, it's copy. It's a novelization of Exile on Main Street. With the song, like, just as he was flipping through it, I saw that the musical parts are typed out. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Yeah. It's got to be extremely valuable. Yeah. Who was it signed by? No, not any of the Rolex Dodes. Yeah, I couldn't make out the signature. I think it's signed by Barney Frank. That's, there's got to be somebody that that hit some buttons for. They're willing to pay top dollar. All right, let's go out and talk to this kid. So uh, what's your name, little guy? Oh, Frofrick. Frofrick. That's an interesting name. I guess. W- where does that come from? Do you know? Uh, I think that my parents thought I looked kind of like a frog. <laughs> Ugh, another kid. What's well, this one look like? Well... Kind of looks like a frog, I guess. Gaga. Ugh. He looks like Guga Gaga. A frog, I guess, crossed with 
Rick Perry, the yeah. governor of Texas. <laughs> yeah, that's it, funny. I was thinking the exact same thing. All right, let's let's well, do like a portmanteau. Ooh, God, we'll ooh, call God, him God, Rick. What is that? It's where you combine words to make another word. Oh, we've done that with all our kids. That's so funny. And I you never, never heard me say poor mento before? No, I don't think hey, so. Hey, do me a favor. Don't get me pregnant again, okay? <laughs> Frofrick, listen, um, I tell you what, if you gave us that book, <laughs> the novelization of Exile on Main Street, signed by former <laughs> representative Barney Frank, uh-huh. I think we could probably call it even. And then we can call your parents to come get you. Okay, but... I don't think they're going to like that. Why do you say that? Well, they thought I looked so much like a frog, they brought me to the aquarium and then just stuck me in the uh, octopus tank. Octopus tank. And the octopus is the murderer of the sea. <laughs> now, who told you that? Oh, just common sense. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you got it right, but I was just curious how a little guy would know that. How'd you get out? Well, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> You're never getting out of here. You know who I am? I'm the murderer of the sea. Oh, gosh. You're mine now, son. Oh, no. Please keep your beak away from me, you oh, monster. You're lucky I'm not a squid. They're even smarter than octopuses. Oh, well, I don't know about that. It's interesting. The way we measure intelligence doesn't really apply to the octopus. I mean, the way their brain works is almost as if each individual arm has a brain. So to say that one is smarter than the other, it's like they're not even on the same scale. It's hey, a true hey, alien hey. form of intelligence. Hey, what are you doing with that pillow? Oh, uh, I'm just going to make sure you're nice and comfy. <laughs> How is this possible? I'm the murderer of land. <laughs> so you use a pillow uh-huh. to absorb all the water <laughs> that the octopus was breathing, mm-hmm. suffocating her. Mm-hmm. That's pretty clever. Yeah. And I'm sorry, did you say the octopus spoke to you? Oh, um, that was my interpretation. <laughs> You're an interesting kid. Oh, go on. You flatter me. <laughs> <laughs> now look, Frofrick. Tim and I, we're just going to take this book and uh, we're going to have it appraised. And you can stay here with uh, Harani, our colleague. Um, and I, I tell you what. I if, messed up, man. I, I know, Ronnie. I know, the Ronnie. The salad's all gone, Ronnie, man. I know, I know, I know. I know, and you've, you've put, caused quite a black eye for the aquarium. Um, but just you calm down. And, and listen, I want to talk to Frofrick here in the broom closet. Listen, Frofrick. Uh-huh. You know how you called yourself the, uh, the murderer of the land? Yeah. I think that Ronnie there kind of thinks he might be the murderer of the land. So um, if your title is important to you, you might want to... uh, This could be a good opportunity to solidify my position. That's exactly what I was thinking. All right, I'll just uh, just leave you to it. You mind if I stick? (laughs) Wait, what do you say? I was about to close the door. No, no, it's okay. Go ahead. No, what were you going to say? No, 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 it's okay. All right. All I was going to say back then... Hey, (laughs) hey, just tell me what you were going to say. Oh, yeah, it wasn't a big deal. I was going to say, you mind if I stay in here for a minute, just sort of collect myself? <laughs> no, that's totally fine. Yeah. That's totally, take as much time as you need. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. Okay, like, Ronnie- The cord broke off from spinning the salad too <laughs> yeah, many <okay>. times. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's, let's, let's not work. I'm sorry, I wish I could just give this up. <laughs> no, I know. There's not I even any more salad in there. I, Ronnie ate it all. I, I, I screwed up, man. I blew it. Listen, Ronnie, Ronnie, it's fine. It's fine. This has happened to me before. I, listen, I'm listen. I'm in trouble. Why don't you? You're not in any trouble. Uh-huh, Ronnie, uh-huh, you're not in any trouble uh-huh. at all. You're not in any okay. trouble at all. I tell you what. Why don't you just step into that broom closet and collect yourself, and Tim and I are just going to take a quick trip to Antiques Roadshow. Okay? Uh, okay. All right. And Ronnie? Good luck, man. Thanks. And it all happened at a place called Aquarium. Sean Clements at Hayes Davenport. Wow. Where can fast. people <laughs> 
Where can people find you online should you wish to be Pulled found? Pulled the plug Sean. on that thing. <laughs> Where? That was all ready to be my <laughs> Antiques Roadshow guy. <laughs> I heard you take a breath. Yeah. I know. Look, I wish the show could be four hours long, too, but it can't be. Mm, John, John, where yeah. can people find you online? Well, uh, I'm on the podcast Hollywood Handbook. That's I've right. got a Twitter. It's at Sean Clements. Um, I think that's basically it. <laughs> you Instagram very sporadically. Yeah, every now and then. <laughs> Had a good oh, one to oh, me oh. and a cat the other day. I saw that. Yeah. You seem like good friends. Uh, yeah, I love that guy. A little, little bit of a cheesecake photo. It was, <laughs> it was, I'm not wearing a shirt in it, and I was uncomfortable with it, and I wrestled with it a little, and then I just said, you know what? That's kind of what makes the picture so funny. Oh. Did you talk it over with, with your wife and some yeah. friends? Okay. I'm glad you arrived at a decision you were comfortable with. Still a little uneasy, but... Okay. Hayes, where can people find you? I, um... I've only done one Instagram photo. <laughs> what was it? It was a dog that I saw lying on a... Under a lamppost just by himself. Just lying on the street. <laughs> An old golden retriever when I was just walking around. I tried to take a photo of it. <laughs> and it was so dark, I had to just delete it. You couldn't see the dog. So the one Instagram photo you posted, you then deleted. It was ultimately okay. deleted. I was getting excited that I could go see this one. Photo. No, I, it, w- it would have been great if I could have figured out the how frustrating to get the flash thing to work is or something. People who want to catfish Hayes have to go through my Instagram account now because his is inactive. Yes, but we have had that happen where I get a direct message on Instagram that says, "Can you give me Hayes Davenport's phone number?" And the, it does continue from there. Is this something I want to talk about in detail? No, it's not. Uh, I'm sure no one will want to hear about it. <laughs> Hayes, where can people find you online? Do you want you I, on Twitter? I Yeah, I have a Twitter account, but I don't really tweet, but I still do like, I check often to see if my follower account is going up. And so I appreciate. <laughs> it's like a real test of people's yep. appreciation of you. Hey, how about if I never tweet? Let's see how you like me then. That's exactly what I'm trying to give off to the world it's like look how well i'm doing without even tweeting at all does does the number go up yeah very slowly bots <laughs> guys please don't have this fight here and let me say this hollywood handbook which is a podcast right here on earwolf weekly podcast what day does it come out tuesday tuesdays mm-hmm. and honestly one of my favorites um i've gotten to guest on it uh a number of times and I uh, enjoy it. It's one of those that is a uh, immediate listen on the day that it comes out. Oh, thank you. It's an right aqu- to the top of the queue. I've heard more m- more people saying that it took them. I saw someone say recently that it took them fifteen or twenty episodes to get into it, and now they like it. But it took them between fifty and twenty, fifteen and twenty episodes. Don't quit before Don't it quit. happens. <laughs> yeah, please. An important caveat to people on the fence. Yes. Give it one more episode, guys. <laughs> one more episode. See it's if you don't enjoy almost it. A full, it's a full waking day of your life. It's half a month. Eben Schletter is on all the things as Eben Schletter. How do you spell Eben Schletter? Well, I'll tell you. It goes like this. <clears throat> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. Go to ebenschletter.com and seek out Eben's non-spontaneous nation work because it is great. Why is it great? Because Eben Schletter is only the best. As for me, what do I have to plug? I don't remember when this comes out. Check my live dates at pauloftompkins.com slash live. You can find me online in all the usual places if you can get a reasonable approximation of the spelling of my last name. Thank you to Earwolf Roasting the Show. Thank you to Engineer Sam for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti. Thanks again to CISO for sponsoring this week's episode. S-E-E-S-O dot com. CISO, the all-comedy, ad-free streaming TV service made for the serious comedy fan. CISO is stacked with new original series like Harmon Quest. Follow the creator of Community and Rick and Morty, Dan Harmon, and his team of comedian companions through the world of fantasy role-playing. Bajillion Dollar Properties. It's Reno 911 meets Million Dollar Listings. A semi-scripted comedy about the cutthroat world of luxury real estate in L.A. Featuring me, Paul F. Tom. 
Tompkins. CISO is also full of amazing stand-up specials from Brian Posehn, Wyatt Cenac, Rory Scovel, Matt Besser, and Big J Okerson, just to name a few. CISO has a ton of awesome comedy. So go to CISO.com and start your free trial today. That's right. They're giving you a month completely free. CISO.com. Hey everyone, this is Scott Aukerman of Comedy Bang Bang. I want to tell you that Now Hear This is a brand new podcast festival that's happening this fall. Get ready for a weekend of live performances and opportunities to meet your favorite podcasters. Now Hear This will feature podcasting titans like me, Scott Aukerman, doing Comedy Bang Bang Live in addition to How Did This Get Made, WTF with Mark Marin, with special guest Lauren Lapkus, Brilliant Idiots, and more being announced all the time, including plenty more Earwolf and non-Earwolf favorites. Lock the gate! It's all happening in Anaheim, California, October 28th through the 30th. You'll get Halloween off. Don't worry. Buy your tickets now and get all the details at nowhearthisfest.com. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 